guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing this very look right here. We're going to be using the I Love Sarai ColourPop Collection Palette. I love this eyeshadow palette. I love the colors on there. If you haven't noticed, my last first and last tutorial was on this very look right here. Um, it's a very simple look, very easy to follow along. We do both eye look and foundation routine in this video. So if you want to find out how I did this look, just keep on watching. Alright, so eyebrows and eyelids are prepped off camera. Um, we are ready to get started. Again, I don't include the eyebrow routine just because it's going to be a video all on its own, but if you guys like to see that, just let me know and we'll go ahead and do that. Um, we are going to use our I Love Set IE ColourPop Through My Eyes collection once again. I just love the shades in here and I want to keep playing with this palette. So we are going to start with that sandalwood shade again, which is right over here. Sandalwood's just a great transition shade to have, especially when you're gonna do a smoky look like the one we're gonna do today, just because it's not really gonna poke through as much, but it's gonna be there when you need it, you know? We're gonna work that in. Windshield wiper motions, and you're pushing this eyeshadow out towards your temple, so back. When I'm doing this, I really like to think about whether I'm gonna use an eyeliner or not, just because it's really gonna help me dictate the shape of the eye that I'm trying to create. So I am going to not use eyeliner, which is very normal for me, so I'm gonna just wing that out as much as I can towards the tail of my brow and start to shape it into that V. With shades like this into the crease, you want to make sure that you are above the crease, not exactly at the crease, just because this is going to help to blend things out later on. Remember to keep holding your brush towards the end of the brush instead of putting too much pressure on the actual brush itself. And what I mean by that is hold it towards the back. You don't realize it, but it's just like holding a pen. The more pressure that you put on it, the harder you squeeze the rougher the color is gonna look, even if it's a great blending brush. So I just like to keep blending, building. It's okay if this color gets into the lid, it's okay if it drops below. Um, one thing that I do recommend you guys do is putting um, the primer all the way into the inner corner and also below the lash line. I know a lot of people don't do that, but I like to just because this is a really good primer, especially the Urban Decay Primer Potion in Eden. It's got a lot of grip to it. And when um, I refer to the grip, it just means that the eyeshadows are really going to come through a lot better. And you can see pigment better than when you use other eyeshadow primers or no primer. Alright, so I'm dragging it out pretty far, making sure that it's pretty blown up. And then I always like to go into a fluffy blending brush, just like this one. This is the one that um, Soho doesn't have a number on it, but you want brushes that are nice and long and fluffy. Just full looking brush versus something like this. Okay, there's a big difference between the two brushes. All right, this one's the pack color. Yes, it's gonna blend, but you want something with longer bristles like this one that's gonna help blend things out. There is no additional product on this brush. I am just running that through the outside, making sure that everything is blended and that there aren't any harsh lines. All right, so once that is on, I'm gonna use yet another blending brush, but this one is gonna be a lot more dense and shorter in bristle. Just wiping off the other color I had on there. I always keep like a tissue handy. This one is just like a wipey, and I clean brushes in between use. That's something I suggest you do also, just because you never know what's gonna happen. It's nice to have them around. So next shade we're gonna use is this shade right here, which is Canena. And I know it looks a little weird because it's got some glitter in it, but I used it the other day to blend and it blended pretty well, so fingers crossed. 
And so Canela is gonna go just below that previous shade sandalwood that we applied. I like this brush because it is just perfect for applying and blending out color. I am focusing a lot of the attention on the outer corner just because I want to start to build that shape out there a little more. And I do get a little crazy with that outer corner just because I like to clean up with concealer afterwards. Um, I don't care what the color scheme of my eyeshadow look is, I can never do my foundation before my eyeshadow. It's just one of those things where I am like too much of a perfectionist with this that I just feel like it's gonna look messy. And it's just my luck. It's always my luck that the mascara is gonna go everywhere and I just cannot. The other day I was walking out. Um, I just had finished my makeup. It's New Year's Eve. I had just sprayed my face down with Fix Plus. And I'm walking out into the living room, stopped by the kitchen to grab a drink, talked to my fiance, and we had a full on conversation, like a full on conversation. I go into the room, get dressed, go into the bathroom to just finish up like straightening a few pieces of my hair that I feel like are out of place. I look at my makeup and I've got mascara everywhere. Like everywhere, below, on top, on my nose somehow. I was so upset because I literally had a full conversation with my fiance. You couldn't stop me and tell me, hey, there's something on your face. I was so upset. Anyways, once that's all blended out, we are going to use hmm, same brush. No, let's let's go back to that blending brush, and I'm not gonna pick up any product. I'm just gonna blend the two shades together. This look is gonna require a lot of blending just because it is meant to be a smoky eye look, and that just just requires more work. All right, so with that same N433 brush, forgot to even say the number earlier, we're gonna take just a little bit of Divina on the very, very tip of the brush. And we are going to just pack that into the outer corner here. And I'm not using windshield wiper motion anymore, I'm just wiggling the brush back and forth in that outer corner. And if you notice, I'm not going in too far on the lid. I'm keeping this just in the outer corner. Picking up my blending brush and we're just gonna blend the very outer part of the shadow, making sure that everything blends in the color we used before. And I want more intensity, so what I'm gonna do with a denser brush, this one is by Luxie 231. It's called the Small Tapered Blending. I'm just gonna pack more color into this outer corner here. Going back to that Morphe M441 brush, I'm gonna take some more of the Canela shade very lightly, and we're gonna just blend this outer part out here. I was gonna cut the crease, but I do wanna keep it pretty smoky, so the next shade that I'm gonna pick up, we're gonna use our um, BH Cosmetics Flat, flat Eyeshadow Brush. Um, this, color, this brush is just gonna help me pack the color on. It doesn't have a number, sorry, but it is just a nice, stiff, um, small, flat eyeshadow brush. I'm gonna pick up this color here, uh, Nocturne, and we are going to pack that right in the center of the lid and blend towards the inner corner. Blending that onto that outer color. I want a gradient effect with this smoky eye. So we're gonna use a few shimmery shades on the lid, but I wanna make sure that everything's blending into each other. 
So small swiping motions, blending that into the darker outer corner shade. Beautiful. So next we are going to pick up this Muse shade, which is right here. And we're going to blend that into the Nocturne shade. Perfect. Okay, so um, we are going to do our eyeliner and lashes off camera, guys. All right, everyone. Lashes are done off camera. Um, so I can't express enough how important it is to cut the lashes and style them, fit them to your eyes. I find that that's what really helps me wear them throughout the day and also apply them. So if you guys would like a mini toot on how to do that, just let me know. Otherwise, let's keep on keeping on. We're going to go with our foundation application. And as of late, I've been loving the Bobbi Brown. Ooh, what is that called? Bobbi Brown Skin Prep Face something. It's a moisturizer slash primer by Bobbi Brown. I'll list it down below. Um, it just is like a very hydrating, dewy, vitamin enriched face base. Yes, Bobbi Brown vitamin enriched face base. However, you can also multitask and use it as a primer, which is what I love the most about it. I'm going to put that on the outer perimeter. My makeup just wears so nicely throughout the day when I put this on. Um, so I've been loving it lately, and then we're going to go with good old Faithful, the Faithful Pores No More by Dr. Brandt, and I'm going to put that in my T-zone. And with this guy, I just like to make sure that I am packing it into all the Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation. I get asked all the time what kind of foundation it is that I use on a daily basis, and if I'm going to be honest with you guys, I switch it up. I use matte foundations, I use dewy foundations, I use foundation sticks, um, cream foundations, liquid foundations. The only honest thing that I can tell you guys is you want to make sure you're prepping your skin with the right stuff. Primer and skincare. That's the only thing that I can tell you. The only thing that doesn't change as part of my face base routine is that part. I always make sure that my skincare is on point. I have a nighttime and a daytime routine, and I make sure that I'm using primers. I can't tell you how many times I ask someone, well, what do you use to prime your face? What do you use as skincare? And they're like, wait, no, I'm talking about your foundation. It doesn't matter. As long as your skin's feeling healthy and feeling its best, it's going to work well with whatever foundation you put on top of it. Perfect. Once we've done with that, I am going to head and use my No Filter Concealer from ColourPop in the shade Light 10. I just got this guy and I like it. I like it so far. I just want to keep trying it, you know, to see if I love it. And I am going to go in under my eyes. I like to focus the majority of the product in that inner corner because I know that that's where I have the most pigmentation around the nose and then whatever's left over in the applicator I'm going to put on my chin. Now that we're going to move on to the under eye area, what I recommend clients do is that they work from the outer perimeter in, that way you're dragging the product into the areas where you need it the most. And then I also like to take advantage and clean up my eye area here like I said earlier. And I use the tail of my eyebrow as a guide. Once I blended that out, I can go ahead and set. Um, I'm not going to apply too much concealer under there. A trick that I've learned is that less with the concealer under your eyes you get older is a lot better. But I also have this MAC um, 
Mineral Loose Foundation, and this actually has pigment. It's an extra light, so it's gonna help me further brighten while setting, which is why I've gone a little more light-handed with the concealer, so. I'm gonna take that on my Laura Mercier Poof. Also gonna to start to contour with this, so I'm gonna take it underneath my cheeks. So we're done with the setting powders. While that's baking and kind of doing its thing, we're gonna go ahead and finish the eye area. So, you, all right, once we're done with that, if things are gonna move quickly, we're gonna take a Luxie 660 brush and we're gonna just dust off all this extra powder. If you guys are having a hard time contouring, I suggest you try this technique of baking underneath your cheeks before you go into the contour because it helps to create a guide and you almost don't have to do as much. I'm gonna just take the excess here, shade and light palette, and we are going to contour and bronze with that. To contour, I like to shake, shake. I like to take my Real Techniques contouring brush. We're gonna use it first on the last shade, and we're gonna go ahead and contour the cheekbone. Perfect. So using the same two shades, I'm going to take the Luxie 207 brush, and it's a nice angled brush. I find this very easy to use, especially when I'm trying to contour my nose. And we're going to blend that out. From your brow to the very end of your nose, you're going to take that and you're just going to blend that in. Perfect. Using a BH Cosmetics 124 brush, we're going to take that center shade of the Shade of Light palette and we are going to warm up the face. And this guy I like to take in a three or E shape, whichever way you're looking at it, but it's forehead, cheekbone, chin area. Blend that into the forehead highlight. Just blend away. Soft and gentle mineralized skin finish and a Morphe M501 brush and we are going to highlight high points of the face but also everywhere. I like to do it above the brow bone, cheeks, look at that. Perfect. Lastly, but definitely not least, as cheek, we're gonna use Tarte Blush and Party, and I'm gonna take a BH Cosmetics angled brush I prefer the angled brush just because it makes things easy. I feel like it fits perfectly on the cheek and I like to pat that on in between both the um, bronzer and the highlight just because swirling to me, I might lift a lot of what we've already done versus patting helps me build up the color without having to move anything else underneath it. And that is it for cheek. I don't really like to do too much blush just because I go in with the bronzer. Lastly, we have lip to do. What do we want as lip? Um, for lip combo, I think I'm gonna go with a nude color. I love nudes and I just got this collection from ColourPop and I love Sarai. Um, she has this pretty nude lip color, which I think I'm gonna use and this is Sueño de Coco and we will put that with my Rock and Rose Lip Liner by Jordana. So let me pop these on and I'll be right All right, guys, this is the finished look right here. I used a lip liner, I used the matte lipstick. However, I feel like I needed to add a little something, so I threw on some of the I Love Sarai ColourPop Ultra Gloss Glossy Lip in Glass Lip. That's a tongue twister. Um, and it just completed everything. So I hope you guys like this look. I love the way the skin turned out. I love the eye look. 
Overall, I feel like this is very wearable, whether it's to dress it up or dress it down, definitely for a date night. So if you guys want to see more looks like this, comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Look me up on Instagram. It's Jovia DeJesus, and I'll see you next time.